Hey, what's up everybody? Will Layton here with the Layton Realty Group in Virginia Beach. One of the questions many people have is, what are the best places to live in Virginia Beach? So I'll start out with a quick overview of the different areas and neighborhoods and why you might want to live there including waterfront neighborhoods. We'll talk about school zones and why they matter. Should you buy new construction? We'll talk about the pros and cons. We'll talk about jet noise and military bases. And then we'll put all these things together and discuss what I think are the top three best places to live in Virginia Beach. What I found is that even longtime residents tend to focus on the areas right around where they live. I showed a home recently in Bay Colony to a family who's lived here for 20 years. It was their first time in the neighborhood. So while today's discussion is tailored for someone who's moving to the area, you'll learn something even if you're a local. So let's get into it by talking about how I came to be talking to you in a video. 15 years ago, we were living to Japan while I was a pilot in the Navy and got orders to Virginia Beach. You'd think my wife and I would each know a dozen different people who could tell us the right place to live, right? Wrong. We heard everything from you have to live in Norfolk, you have to live in Chesapeake, you have to live in North Virginia Beach, South Virginia Beach. Then there was this neighborhood is the best, that neighborhood's the best. The next person's advice would then point us in an entirely different direction. So of course, this left us just about as confused as before asking for advice. We did our research online, which isn't much different than the research you're probably doing now. We stayed up late looking at pictures of homes in an effort to find the right house. Of course, we only got to see what the listing agents were showing us. By the time we finally got to the area, most of the homes we saw online were sold. And we found out that the pictures usually painted a very rosy picture of the house and never told you anything meaningful about the neighborhoods. I was in my squadron's ready room and six guys were sitting around the table arguing about the best places to live in Virginia Beach. Three of them were for North Virginia Beach and three of them were for the South. An outsider would have had trouble telling the six apart. They were all wearing the same uniform, the same boots, sporting the same haircut, getting paid the same salary. They all went to the same types of schools, yet they had all chosen to live in different neighborhoods. How could this be? And then I figured it out. The guys who thought North Virginia Beach were the best didn't know much about the South. And the guys who thought South Virginia Beach was the best didn't know much about the North. They had sort of stumbled into their current neighborhoods just as I had, and were now rooting for it simply because that was where they lived. There's tons of information on individual houses out there, but there's nowhere to go to learn about the neighborhoods. There are some websites that pull census data to try to paint a picture of the neighborhood, but that's like trying to figure out a person's personality by knowing his height and weight. So I built a website featuring the best neighborhoods in Virginia Beach. I took pictures, created web pages, and featured the homes for sale in my favorites. Over the past 10 years, I've toured every neighborhood and spent thousands of hours discussing why one neighborhood might be a better fit than another with my clients. And that has brought you here, because now I'm doing it with video. You can see the neighborhoods for yourself and learn about them as I show you things that my clients have liked and not liked about different neighborhoods, types of homes, schools, you name it. Looking at the big picture of Virginia Beach, the most affordable homes are gonna be found closer to Norfolk and the interstate. The most expensive homes are gonna be found around the oceanfront and the interior waterways in the northern half of Virginia Beach. You can see how the sales move away from the interstate and to the east as the price range rises. Here it is again faster. So how does this apply to you? As a general rule, you don't want to buy the most expensive home in the neighborhood. In this case, it means that you don't want to buy an $800,000 home here. Because if you do, you'll probably have a hard time finding someone to buy it when the time comes to sell it. On the flip side, you might want to reconsider buying a $200,000 in a $500,000 neighborhood. Studies have shown that we compare ourselves to our neighbors whether we want to or not. If everyone around you is living in a big beautiful home with a new car and you're not, it can make you unhappy. I'll talk about this more in another video, but people tend to gravitate towards others with similar tastes, interests, income, among many other things. You can choose to live anywhere you want, but happiness isn't feeling alone in a crowd. Happiness in real estate is when your best friend lives in the neighborhood, or your future best friend, since you haven't moved there yet. I like to break down Virginia Beach into two main areas, North Virginia Beach and South Virginia Beach. The dividing line is approximately Interstate 264, which runs right through the middle from the oceanfront to Norfolk. North Virginia Beach is closer to the water, the beaches, and the interstate so your commute will likely be shorter. It's older than the neighborhoods in the south, so there are more tree-lined streets. If you want to dock your boat at your property, you'll probably want to live in the north. The property values are also a lot higher. South Virginia Beach is newer, and you get more home for the money. They're still building and will likely continue to build here for the foreseeable future. There are no more cornfields to develop in North Virginia Beach, and there are plenty in the south. Choosing to live in the north or south is mostly personal preference. One isn't better than the other, but they are different. All I ask is that you keep an open mind because I've seen lots of people arrive thinking they liked one over the other and then change their minds after seeing them in person. The next step is to learn the personalities of the different areas and neighborhoods. Let's start out at the oceanfront. This is what comes to mind when most people think about Virginia Beach who aren't from here. This is where you'll find the boardwalk and the tourists during the summer. It's home to many festivals, races, the East Coast Surfing Championships, and of course, the Atlantic beaches. The boardwalk runs from Rudy's Inlet in the south up to about 40th Street. Here you can find $300,000 condo or $3 million oceanfront estate and everything in between. For those looking over $500,000, Croatan, Bay Colony, and the North End are great choices. Chatillon, Beachboro, Old Beach Village, 
are all within walking distance of the restaurants and the beach. Prices vary widely, but in general, the oceanfront has some of the most sought after neighborhoods anywhere in the area, and that means it has prices to match. But if you wanna be able to ride your bike to the beach and live in a city, this is the closest place within hundreds of miles. At the end of this video, I'll have links and descriptions that will allow you to look at all the homes for sale in the areas that I'm talking about now. Going up north by the Chesapeake Bay, you'll find Chicks Beach, which is short for Chesapeake Beach. The sand and water is the same you'll find at the ocean front, but since it's sheltered from the ocean swell, there aren't any waves. It's also a bit farther off the beaten track, so you won't find many tourists. As a result, it's a local's favorite during the summer. The Linhaven Inlet provides access to the Chesapeake Bay, so Chicks Beach is home to many who are fans of fishing and recreational boating. Median home price is around $350,000, and that'll get you a 1,500 square foot home. The area has a mix of condos and single family homes, and some of the most convenient locations for storing your boat anywhere. Again, prices vary widely. Move-in ready four bedroom home and condo on the beach go for about $500 to $700,000. Another nice feature is the First Landing State Park, located in the northeast corner of the city and it features miles of wilderness walking trails. You can ride your bike through the state park from Chicks Beach all the way to 64th Street at the oceanfront. Kayaking, boating, jet skiing, it's all here. And just a short drive from anywhere in the northern part of Virginia Beach. The Lesnar Bridge crosses the Lynn Haven Inlet, which connects the Chesapeake Bay to a maze of inland waterways that provides hundreds and hundreds of waterfront homes with deep water access. Many of these homes are in Great Neck and Little Neck, two peninsulas that make up the center of North Virginia Beach. The biggest difference between the two is that the bridge on Great Neck Road connects Great Neck to Chicks Beach. This makes Great Neck quite a bit more convenient for those who use the beaches and state parks. Also, the two high schools that serve both Great Neck and Little Neck are in Great Neck. So if you have high schoolers, or will have them someday, it's something to consider. Little Neck has its benefits also. We'll go into jet noise more later, but Little Neck is arguably much quieter. And since there isn't a bridge that connects with Chicks Beach, the peninsula isn't a pass-through. You won't find yourself in the north part of Little Neck unless it's your destination. As a result, it's nice and secluded, and that means quiet and peaceful. The neighborhoods closest to Virginia Beach Boulevard are the most affordable in both of these areas. As you get into the middle of Little Neck, you'll find King's Grant, where a four-bedroom house on half an acre will run about $500,000. Middle Plantation features larger homes, priced over $500,000 and into the millions for homes on the water. The values in Great Neck are only slightly higher. The waterfront homes cost a bit more, in no small part because of access to Broad Bay and deep water. Many of the coves and canals in Little Neck are tidal. I'll cover that more later when we talk about waterfront neighborhoods. Moving down into South Virginia Beach, you'll find many newer neighborhoods. And by newer, I mean built in the last 20 years or so. While you may find a couple of pockets of new construction in the north, most of the new construction is in the south. So if you're looking for something newer and don't care about the water or the commute, looking down in the south is a no-brainer. That said, Sandbridge Beach is only 10 minutes farther down the road. It's Virginia Beach's version of the Outer Banks. And here you'll find everything from condos to 10-bedroom beach houses. There are plenty of people who live here year-round, and for those that do, they probably really love the beach. It's almost entirely residential and there's no boardwalk, but that's one of the things that the locals love about it the most. House on the beach will cost you about a million to a million five, and the median home price in Sandbridge is $668,000. Now that's a bargain compared to a beachfront home in the North End, which starts at about 2.5 million, with a median home price of $821,000. What's the difference? Location, location, location. The north end has a higher elevation, the beach is bigger, and it's closer to everything, so it costs more. As I mentioned before, and I'll mention it again at the end of this video, I'll have links to the newest listings in each of these areas. There are a ton of great neighborhoods in South Virginia Beach, and many of them are in the Kellum High School District. Asheville Park is one of the newest and also one of the few with a neighborhood pool. Lagomar is the oldest and features tree-lined streets like many of the neighborhoods in the North Virginia Beach. Christopher Farms, Heritage Park, Sherwood Lakes, Courthouse Estates, Princess Anne Woods, Princess Anne Quarter, Highgate Greens, the list goes on and on. The one thing they all have in common is that you get more house for the money and longer commute than you do in the North. Life is all about choices. One of the things that makes Virginia Beach special is access to the water and not just the beach. Once you've had a taste of watching the sunset while out on the Chesapeake Bay or taking the kids tubing for an afternoon on Broad Bay, you'll never look at Virginia Beach the same again. And I'm not alone in thinking this. All you have to do is drive over the bridge that connects Great Neck to Chicks Beach to see all the boats lined up in the marinas stacked up in the hotel. Do yourself a favor and go eat dinner at the porch or Bubba's in Chicks Beach. Let's go over some considerations you might have if you're looking for a house in the water. The first thing to understand is there are many different types of waterfront. Homes on small lakes and ponds are common throughout Virginia Beach, and the premium for a lot isn't much more than a home across the street that backs up to the woods. The reason for this is that the water is basically there for view and privacy. Homes on the beach are waterfront, but there's no place for a dock, so you can't have a boat. These obviously sell for a lot more. There are homes that are on wetlands that offer great privacy and views, but there's no way to get a boat through the wetlands to the deep water. 
homes on deep water or that have deep water access you usually have a pier so you can take your boat to the Chesapeake Bay and beyond if you want. You will pay a premium for homes with deep water access. Some homes will be on deep water like Broad Bay where you can go water skiing 50 feet from your dock. Others will be on a canal where you have to commute through a no wake zone for 10 minutes. Others will be tidal meaning that if you don't have a boat lift your boat will be sitting in the mud at low tide. Some are minutes from the Chesapeake Bay on a canal with lots of traffic. Others are 45 minutes from the bay but provide great views and calm water. The price tags for all these different types of homes vary widely from about $400,000 to just over $7 million and everywhere in between. So as you can see, the term waterfront can mean different things to different people. But most of the time, waterfront means deep water access. And that means if you had a pier, you could walk out to your boat and ride it into the Chesapeake Bay. There are also homes that aren't on the water, but have boat slips deeded to the property. And if you just want to go boating all the time, there are marinas and boat ramps all over the place. Taking a look at the map of North Virginia Beach, you can see all the inland waterways. Starting at the Lynn Haven Inlet in Chicks Beach, you have to travel at no wake speed until you get to Broad Bay. There are several neighborhoods here that have property with deep water access. Lynn Haven Colony, Cape Henry Shores, Bay Island. This leads to the entire west side of Great Neck, Bay Colony and the surrounding neighborhoods, and Bird Neck Point, where you'll find some of the largest boats docked at the Cavalier Golf and Yacht Club. These areas are arguably the best waterfront neighborhoods in the city because they provide quick and easy access to deep water. They're on high ground and the schools are fantastic, which we'll get more into later. Heading south and west from Lynn Haven Inlet and the water surrounding Little Neck, you'll find beautiful views and deep water access too. The biggest difference is that the water is shallower, so it's easier to run aground. The city is dredging many of the canals that run back into these neighborhoods, which helps a lot. More information can be found at vbgov.com dredging. It's time to cover school zones. Virginia Beach has 11 high schools. You can go to greatschools.org to get an overview, but I found that the ratings there don't match up with what the parents and teachers have to say. So the following discussion on schools is based on my opinion derived from being a father of three kids, one in high school, one in middle school, and one in elementary school. And also, I went to public school in three years of private high school. My sister did the opposite. She went to private elementary school and public high school. So it's been very interesting studying the differences. Every time I meet a teacher, I talk with her about what makes a good school. I enjoy talking with other parents about schools. I have a good friend who went to one of the worst high schools in Norfolk, as he calls it, and he tells me stories that are completely foreign to my seemingly middle-of-the-road high school experience. I'm not a certified school expert. The following discussion is just my opinion. It's just meant to give you a perspective you might not have had before. So let me tell you what I think. I think the best of anything is subjective. What's important is what's the best for you. And that's how you should look at the schools. Is it important to you that the school has a strong football program or a strong marching band? Does the graduation rate matter the most or should it be the percentage of kids that go on to earn college degrees? Do test scores matter the most or grades? Or how about this? Which school district has the highest property values? Now we're talking real estate. Maybe that's how you decide which school is the best. Now, if all the teachers in Virginia Beach are awesome, which they are, and all the schools fall under the same leadership and standardization, which they do, then what is it that makes them all measure up differently? I feel like as a realtor, we dare not discuss this for fear of offending someone or getting in trouble with someone else. But I will say this, I believe the best schools are driven by the parents. Wherever you happen to live, I think that the guidance that the parents in a given school district give their children has a lot more to do with the quality of the schools than the teachers. Given a chance to teach, our teachers are fantastic across the board. But in a school where the teachers have to spend some of their time dealing with undisciplined students, that affects everyone's school experience, including the parents. Take the old donation school as an example. It's the gifted public elementary and middle school. It draws from every school district in Virginia Beach and every student has two things in common. First, they have to test into it so the kids are bright. And secondly, and in my opinion, more importantly, the parents have to want it and buy into it with their time and effort. The application process alone is enough to weed out the parents who don't want it. The result is a school full of kids whose parents have the kids' education at the top of their list. Productive parents understand the importance of good education regardless of where they live. So what are the best school districts in Virginia Beach? If you're a $200,000 home buyer, the best school may be different than if you're an $800,000 home buyer. So I'm just gonna rank them by property values and call it a day. I'm not judging, I'm just pulling the numbers out of the public records and letting you decide. And the winners are Cox, First Colonial, and Kellum. Perhaps your winners are different. Perhaps the question you should be asking yourself isn't, what are the best schools? Perhaps it should be, do I wanna buy a $600,000 house in a $300,000 school district? My personal opinion is that you shouldn't do that. But what do I know? I'm just a realtor. Next, let's go over some considerations if you wanna buy a brand new home. First, new homes are fantastic because everything is new. It has new paint, a new roof, new HVAC, new appliances, new everything. Nothing is gonna wear out for several years. Secondly, you're moving into a neighborhood where everyone is excited about their new home, so you immediately have a bond with your new neighbors. And you get that new home smell. 
That's the smell of no one ever living in your house before. The catch is that one of the biggest draws won't be there in five or 10 years when you go to sell, and that's the new. The new drew you in, there has to be more to it than just the new because the next person to buy the house won't have that anymore. The builders are gonna to continue to build, and in five years, another house is gonna be built almost identical to yours, but it's gonna be new. Why would somebody buy yours and not the new one? That's the question you have to ask yourself before buying a new home. That said, new developments come and go. Some of them are expansive, some are just on one street. Most have a model with a sales agent. Keep in mind that the sales agent works for the builder. They don't care which house you buy, as long as it's one of theirs. And they have been doing this every day for years. You don't need an agent to talk you into buying a beautiful new home built as exactly as how you dream it. But you would probably benefit from having an agent on your side go through all the models with you to keep you from making a mistake. The site agent isn't gonna highlight all the negatives, especially if that information might be something that could change your mind about buying there. Also, my advice is to always look at a mix of homes in established neighborhoods and new construction. This keeps the conversation lively and gives you the information you need to make the best choice for you. As you can see from this map, there are new homes for sale spread out everywhere. Old homes are being torn down at the oceanfront in Chicks Beach and new three-story duplexes are popping up in their place. In South Virginia Beach, there are a handful of new developments. A new condo starts at about $250,000 in Virginia Beach. A new single family home starts at about 350 dollars and they top out at about 2.5 million. So there's one out there for you. It's just a question of whether or not it fits your budget and if it's in the neighborhood where you wanna live. That's always the trick, isn't it? Again, there's a link at the end that will take you to all the new construction in the area. Does anyone wanna live in a flood zone? And the answer is yes because everyone lives in a flood zone. And that's because no zone exists that's completely immune to flooding forever. The real question to ask is, am I willing to pay flood insurance to live in this awesome location? Visit the city website again, vbgov.com, and go to the map section. One of the layers you can choose at the top is flood zones. You can see a graphic of the flood zones and you can click on any property to see what flood zone it's in. As you can see from the legend, flood zone X is moderate to low risk areas. Your lender will not require you to buy flood insurance. My house is designated flood zone X. It's 20 feet above sea level. The water comes up to about seven feet in the biggest hurricanes. It would take a meteor strike and the ensuing tsunami for the water to rise that high. So I have much bigger things to worry about than flooding. Other areas may have to worry about it all the time. Bay Island is one of them. Half the homes are at risk of flooding when the monster storms come through. The roads will sometimes be underwater during a big nor'easter that coincides with a full moon at high tide. That's because the tides are higher during a full moon. Yet people love Bay Island and line up to live there. Why is that? Because it's one of the most affordable places to buy a house with deep water access, if you're in a flood zone, which means zone AE, where you have to buy flood insurance. But the homes on Bay Island are on high ground in zone X with sweeping views of Broad Bay, those aren't the affordable ones. Most of the time you don't have to worry about flood zones and flood insurance. Plenty of people buy homes that require flood insurance and they do so by choice because they wanna live in a certain area or in a certain home. So you shouldn't cross off every house that requires flood insurance, but you should take into consideration when making a final decision. Another interesting chart is for hurricane evacuation zones. Zone A corresponds to lowest lying areas that are the most prone to flooding. Sandbridge, and interestingly enough, most of Norfolk. The big red splotch of Zone D right in the middle of Virginia Beach is the Pungo Ridge. The ridge is a whopping 20 feet high and runs from the top of Great Neck through Hilltop, get it, Hilltop, and on through Oceana Naval Air Station. Another interesting chart to look at is the AQ's map air installation compatibility use zone, also known as noise zones. The noise emanates from Oceana Naval Air Station. Everyone who buys or sells a house in Virginia Beach has to sign a disclosure stating that they understand what AQ zone they're in. It's rare to hear a jet take off before 8 a.m. and there are provisions that those super cool jet fighter pilots must take to reduce the noise in the evening. Again, it's just something to be aware of. Oceana isn't the only military base in Virginia Beach. There's many throughout Hampton Roads. Many people work on these bases, both active duty and civilian. As with any job, some people want to live close to where they work. Others don't care about the commute. When I worked at Oceana, I lived in Norfolk and then moved to Virginia Beach. I'm one of those who don't like the commutes. The Norfolk Naval Base is the largest in the world. You might not have known that. It's about a 45 minute commute from South Virginia Beach and I've had many clients buy there and say the commute doesn't bother them. Now it's time to wrap things up and I promised you that I'd give you my list of the three best places to live in Virginia Beach. By now I hope you've learned that there are many different criteria that go into choosing a neighborhood and that the best for you could be completely different from someone else. Remember my story about the six Navy guys sitting around the table talking about neighborhoods? And that's how it will go with you. Your best friend might live here and know the area. Maybe your sister lives here. You see it happen all the time and you will choose to live somewhere completely different. So keep an open mind, learn the neighborhoods and then make an informed choice. So here they are, the beach. That includes Chicks Beach and the oceanfront, Great Neck and Little Neck, and South Virginia Beach. Why these places? Because this is where you'll probably end up if you move up the salary ladder and stay here long enough. I like to say that Great Neck is the center of the universe. And it is, for me, because I live here. My wife and daughters live here. This is where we go to school and church and play soccer. But so what? 
What will you choose to make the center of your universe? So now what? Because there's so much information out there and so many different types of neighborhoods, it's hard not to make a mistake if you aren't getting the right guidance. But like anything worthwhile, it's gonna take some time. In this case, time looking at different areas, different neighborhoods, different houses, and talking through the pluses and minuses as they apply to you. So you need help. The information in this webinar is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to learn in your house hunting journey. So stop wasting your time staying up late at night looking at listings online and start being productive. It doesn't matter if you're moving here next week or just want to learn more about the area. Let's get this conversation started.